of Sac Sacramento Metropolitan Fire District for February 10th, 2022. Um, I go ahead and Melissa, if you'll uh, just do a roll call. Yes, Director White. Aye. And Director Clark. Here. And Chair Gould, um, that completes roll call. Everyone is present. Excellent, thank you very much. I'd like to just let the uh, uh, listening public know that right now is the opportunity for them to discuss matters of public interest within the committee's scope, including items on or not on the agenda. Is there anyone that would like to speak to the policy committee? I did not have anyone reach out beforehand. However, Art, if you could go ahead and unmute everyone and give them a chance to speak if they so wish. Uh, there are no other at attendees. Perfect, that makes things easy. <laughs> thank you for that. Okay, thank you very much for that. We'd like to go ahead and start with action items. Action item number one is the election of officers. We'll entertain a motion for a chair and a vice chair of the policy meeting committee for 2022 uh, if it if it pleases the committee um, I think that uh, I don't have a problem with us continuing uh, with uh, director Gould as a chair and you know the, the structure that we have right now I agree yeah okay um, that's fine with me I think that works pretty well let's go ahead and at this point uh, entertain a motion for Director Gould to serve as chair, Director Clark to continue serving as vice chair, and that will be it. I would I like to move. Okay, <laughs> second. <laughs> okay, let's let's just um, adjust that motion to also include, even though Jennifer's not here, I'm sure she wouldn't be opposed to having Jennifer join us as an alternate should we have an issue. I will make a motion that we have. Director Sheets as an alternate to the policy committee. Okay, we'll second. include, yeah, we'll include both on the floor. Let's just amend the first one to have all, all three of us identified. Is that okay with you, Melissa? That's fine. I still have a motion by Director Clark and a second by Director White. Right, okay. Let's go ahead and call the roll, please. Director Clark. Aye. White. Aye. Ann Gould. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Appreciate that, gentlemen. Let's move on to action item number two. Capital Mr. Chair, Improvement can Program I interrupt Policy. Me? The consent agenda. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Can we can we take the consent agenda quickly? Oh, my bad. Yeah, let's do consent. I'm sorry, I missed that one. No problem. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I move the consent agenda. Thank you. I second. I'll second. Okay, we have a first and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Director Clark. Aye. White. Aye. Ann Gould. Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Now I think we can go. Thank you very much. Now we can go to our presentation items. No, we've got an action item with Capital Improvement Program Policy. Uh, Mr. O'Toole. Uh, thank you, uh, and good evening. Uh, Mr. Chair and Directors, I'm Dave Cool Chief Finance Officer. Uh, my remarks pertain, as you said, to the Capital Improvement Program policy and the corresponding changes to the Reserve Funding Policy and Capital. Um, first, I want to report that while we don't have a Capital Improvement Program yet, uh, the Finance Division, working closely with uh, Jeff Fry and Aaron Castleberry, are preparing that for your consideration as part of the preliminary budget process in the spring. Uh, it will be a standalone document separate from the budget, of course, but um, we'll tie directly and all the financials will be, uh, we'll have to match between the two. So we that, that's what you'll see in preliminary budget time. Um, the board uh, made developing a comprehensive five-year capital plan, one of the strategic goals uh, for the district, and we look forward to delivering on that in a few months. The plan will include real property, apparatus, and professional equipment. Um, the CIP policy before you is a description of the process, priorities, and metrics that were used to build the CIP. The CIP policy was developed using models that we extracted from um, the California Society of Municipal Finance Officers and the um, Government Finance Officers of America using best practices and looking at other cities in California and what they did. Um, and that was uh, the basis um, for our plan. 
uh, that CIP incorporates and is consistent with district master plans and board of director goals and other long-term plans of the district. Uh, capital projects, when we do, when we present them, uh, may be funded out of capital improvement funds, development impact fee funds, grant funding, or debt financing with the operational costs funded out of the general fund. Um, the CIP policy establishes procedures and definitions that require corresponding changes. As I said before, the reserve funding policy and the capital asset policy changes to the capital asset policy first, um, link the capital asset policy to the CIP policy by ensuring that the capital asset schedule of intended purchases uh, for the fiscal year includes the CIP and documents that the CIP is part of the budget process. There's a couple of tweaks you saw to that policy. Over on the reserve funding policy, um, uh, the changes include an expanded definition of capital projects that mirrors the CIP to include, quote, apparatus, equipment, and the construction, rehabilitation, and improvements to district facilities and properties, quote. Additionally, the changes to the, uh, the definitions clarify the reserve fund source and how development impact fee revenues may be used for capital projects. Um, the staff's recommendation is to approve this policy to uh, go for their consideration with the full board. Questions? Are there any questions for our CFO relative to this program policy? None from this side. I can't see any hands at this point. So if there are, just go oh. ahead and say your piece. No, I, I, I don't have any uh, questions right now. Okay, thank you. Director White? No questions. Okay, I wanna say one thing before we take a motion on this. Uh, Mr. O'Toole, I wanna thank you for this. This was very well written and I think a very strong document as we try to solidify this one element of the department. So I was very impressed with the quality of the definitions and, and really the work that's been put into this. I look forward to its further uh, development as other elements come into play. But thank you very much for bringing this forward and uh, and, and presenting it to this committee. Thank you. I'll entertain You're very welcome. a motion. Yeah, you, I, that was very nicely done. Thank you. I'll entertain Mr. a motion. Mr. Chairman, I. Uh... I move that we uh, we adopt a staff recommend recommendation that the policy committee approve the capital improvement program policy and corresponding okay, updates to the reserve funding policy and capital asset uh, policy and refer it to the full board. Okay, thank you. Director White, you want to second that? Yeah, I will second that motion. Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you'll go ahead and please call the roll. Director Clark. Aye. White. Aye. And Gould. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much again. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. O'Toole. Very nicely done. Appreciate that. Okay, next up are uh, several presentation items, um, all of which are managed by Matt. Matt, if you join us, I just wanna let you know it's perfectly fine. Uh, since you're the, you're the presenter of all four of these, uh, that we just, I don't need to you know ask for the next one or ask for the next one. Just let us know when you're done, since they're all presentation items, no actions will be taken. And you can just go right down through all four of our five of them. Yes, sounds like a plan. Okay. Okay, uh, I will start off with the data security policy. We brought this to the policy committee back in November and Director Gold, you had some great comments. So I included those into this policy. And we have also broadened the policy as well. So the data security policy, it lines out how we are going to protect our data. And it goes through certain things like mobile devices. And uh, if you're printing your email um, or network security, it, it uh, describes how we're going to do a penetration test uh, on an annual basis and how uh, to report if you have a suspected uh, breach or um, any other type of security issue. Uh, any questions? Um, uh, Matt, I will just tell you, I was again, very impressed with the inclusion of some of the additional work that we uh, suggested to your, uh, your team. And I was, I was very impressed with all, actually all five of these uh, I think have really matured in, in just kind of their depth and breadth. So thank you very much for that. Um, and I'm assuming you're pleased with second round of this. Uh, yes, yes, I am. And, and again, I definitely appreciate the uh, the comments you provided in the last meeting. 
it was it was uh, great and uh, we want to definitely make sure we include it okay all right um any questions for i'm assuming that's presentation item number one mm -hmm. correct okay any questions relative to that no no question okay. just a comment that you know understanding the significance of cybersecurity, and you know i i really do uh appreciate the development of sound best practice policies for, to ensure that to the extent we can. Excellent, thank you. Thank you, Director White. All right, let's move on to the second item. Okay, second item is the, policy, the password policy. Again, we brought this to the policy committee back in November and uh, uh, you made some great comments when we added those as well as we expanded a, a couple of items inside of the policy. The password policy just basically states how we create our our passwords. We gave the the users a um, an example on what to do uh, when they create their policy. Uh, their, excuse me, their password, um, and it also states how we're going to start securing our um, applications uh, using uh, multi-factor authentication. Um, we're also um, adding in here. Uh, how often we change our passwords, and obviously the the limitation or sorry the uh, the um, requirements for your passwords. Right. Any questions? Oh, Any questions, I, folks? I think that's a great job. As a matter of fact, I think I've actually learned a few things about you know keeping my information uh, uh, you know uh, uh, during my on my computer. So, thank you, man. <laughs> You're welcome. Very good suggestions. All right. No further questions. Let's move on to the third item. Okay. Next uh, policy is the electronic mail policy. Uh, it's a uh, new policy for us, just outlining on the usage of uh, using uh, district email. Uh, and let's see, the uh, couple of highlights on there, uh, just instructing on on if you're going to send an email to all members, understanding the proper use of that mm -hmm. uh, and um, the material, you, you can't contain fraudulent, harassing, embarrassing information, et cetera. Um, and outline just what is spam. And let's see here. And uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say the only question I had on this one is who gets to decide what is harassing, you know, what is inappropriate. Who who is the arbitrator of that decision? That I don't have an answer at the moment for you. Um, okay. This the, is just. A, I would um, think that it would come back from HR if HR had an issue. Um, it, it, okay. Like with spam, with spam it comes in. Spam is kind of in the eye of the receiver. Right. So when it comes down to the harassment, etc., I would think that it would be an email that somebody may find offensive and would bring it to HR's attention. We we there, may there have is. to eventually, yeah, we may have to eventually tweak on this one and get some of that rectified. So okay, okay, uh, we'll we'll handle that part of it. I see Director White. Did you have a comment? Yeah, there there is a, a legal definition when it comes to, you know, of embarrassing, you know, not of embarrassing, but of defamation of character, you know, where it has to be uh, knowingly false information. And so there, there are some legal interpretations that could pro apply to that, uh, you know, to the, right. the standard. So I guess maybe we should, you know, not only HR, but um, perhaps Council Labra uh, review or give some guidelines on on what meets the intent or definition of that policy. Okay, I will, I will yeah. work on that. Yeah, I would say that that would be a really safe place to be, Matt, is let's reach out to our council and say, how does the state or the feds define each of these terms? There's got to be some reference that we can tap into so that there's a common understanding of the definitions of those or how they're even how they're even considered 
so that we're transparent in that because as I read this one, I was a little, a little disconnected from, okay, but one person's definition of spam or harassment may be different from others. And we wanna be very clear of which standards we're using. And I believe Director White brings up a good point. Let's not have Metro define that Let's go to you know to the law books or wherever is an appropriate reference. Sounds good. I'll okay. work on that. All right. All right. Any other questions about the electronic mail policy? Yep. Okay. Let's go on to number four, cell phone policy. Okay. Uh, cell phone policy. We uh, it covers um, what we consider as business phone calls and personal phone calls and identifies. Um, what the restrictions are for using a district issued cell phone. It also takes into account the language from the state of California on using your cell phone while driving. And it puts in the, the actual legal language from the state of uh, California. Sure. Okay. All right. Any questions about that one? Seemed pretty straightforward to me. Any questions about the cell phone policy? No. Okay. All right. Okay. Very good. Let's let's move on to the final one, Pat, and that's uh, employee personal electronic device policy. Yes. This this policy is uh, it's like a BYOD policy. Uh, we do not have a BYOD program, which is bring your own device, where we would pay uh, a stipend to use your cell phone uh, in lieu of a district issued cell phone. So what we try to do on this uh, policy was to um, identify what the restrictions and guidelines are if you decide to use your personal device uh, in a work environment. Um, so we basically said in there that if you use your device for district business and let's say you damaged your device on duty, it lays out the, the policy on if you know what we do in that situation. Um, as well as it also states that if you're going to add your district mail onto your personal device, um, it, it, it requires you on your mobile device to set a, pa a passcode per our policy. And also, if you were to lose your device, you need to notify IT so we can go ahead and wipe your device. So by putting it on your personal device, you're, you're accepting the policy that we can wipe your personal device in order to protect our data that is on there. Yeah, I really like this one too. I think it was, it ties right back to the first one of, you know, how we're protecting our data. So, so yes, and I do want to mention that we did send this to uh, Local 522 for their review mm -hmm. and they did approve it to bring it to the policy committee. Excellent. Okay. Appreciate that little input. All right. For, uh, for gentlemen, President Gould. Through the chair. Yep. Yeah. Okay, go um, ahead. Matt, what, what percentage do uh, say or kind of a roundabout figure of how many of our employees do, do use their personal, uh, you know, device to do uh, business with the uh, district? Or, uh, they, they don't have to check in with us to add their email. So I, I could not tell you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't imagine it would be many because normally you have a separate phone for your own personal thing because you don't yeah yes yeah that's normally what i've done in business before you know you have your own yeah a lot of the uh, uh professional staff they 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 will carry two phones right uh, when it comes to suppression uh they have the option that they can add it into their own personal device and, and we we don't know we they don't have to get approval from us to add it into their laptop home computer or their mobile device Oh, okay. That's why I wanted to make sure that we outlined what that looks like if they do add it on there. Okay. Thank and you. Director Dr. Gould White. and Matt Roseberry. Yeah, uh, This go is ahead. Tyler Wagaman. Just oh, to make I... some quick work of the harassment question, I'm looking yeah. at the board policy that covers uh, workplace harassment, and it does uh, have it well-defined on what that harassment is. And uh, I, I believe that based on the current definition, it, it is covered. So it might be just be as easy as cross-referencing the two policies to make sure they're talking to one another. Yeah, I can, I can do I that. I can, yeah, I can just reference that line back to the other policy. Yep, fantastic. Thank you, Tyler. Chief Wagaman, a question I have. Does it 
does it specifically address just the issue of harassment or does it go into the other terms? It has multiple terms, workplace okay. harassment, work, workplace discrimination, sexual harassment, and so yeah. forth. Specifically, okay. it's, it's pretty vague though under workplace harassment, any form of unwanted or unwelcome behavior ranging from unpleasant remarks to physical violence. And does that harassment policy have a reference that it's using that is outside of our agency, like a federal definition or a state definition? Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm certainly not going to read the entire policy to you, but there are multiple references, legal okay. references in the background. Yes. Perfect. So then, Matt, what I would suggest is uh, you're spot on. Since that is a, a, a solid document in itself, just reference that in your policy on uh, that, we're, that we've been speaking about. Copy that. Yeah, good. All right. Uh, uh, Director White, I thought I heard you say, was it you that, or was it Chief Wagaman? I think it was Chief Wagaman. My only okay. other comment on this thing would be that, you know, it's also the policy is clear about no expectations of privacy on the district devices, you know, and that should you use your personal devices or account for district business, then they too become subject to Public Record Act requests. Absolutely. As long as that's included and, in there. Yeah, uh, and Director White, oh, mm -hmm. go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I was just going to say it does include what uh, the limitations of the PRA request on your personal device if you do use it for business. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and, and Matt, the local recognized that and agreed to it? Correct. Yes, they, they okay. did approve it. Okay, great. All right. So that was item number five on the policy committee. Are there any other questions or comments? Uh, Melissa, do you have anything you want before we adjourn this particular session? Uh, thank you, there's nothing I need on my end. Okay, thank you. Matt, thank you very much for all those presentations. And again, very nice work. Really appreciate the tweaks, they're, they're, they're really sound. With those minor exceptions, I think we've got something really good. Now, these were presentation items with the with the edits that we suggested. Are you planning in our next board, uh, policy meeting to come back to make these an action item? Um, they actually don't go back to the board for full approval since they're just administrative policies. Okay, very good. All right, I yes. just wanted to make sure that you weren't, we weren't holding you up because no. you would bring them back. Okay. No, no, All no right. we brought the other two back because you you uh, you requested right. and uh, you made some great uh, comments and I wanted to get those included in there for you. Great, okay. Gentlemen, any other questions? None here. None okay. here. Okay, then let's have this meeting adjourned until we meet in full session. Thank All you. Right. All right. Thank you. Thank you.